Hello my fellow YouTubers. As you can see I am standing in the wheel well of a Boeing 737-800 currently in storage as you can see by the landing gear pin that's fitted to the main gear. I'm standing in the left hand wheel well where that main wheel fits into when it's retracted through this gap over here. just want to show you a little bit of the hydraulic spaghetti that's going on in the wheel well of this Boeing 737-800. I'm going to try and stand back as far as I can so you can see everything. This is the forward wall of the wheel well. Forward cargo, first centered fuel tank will be, and then forward, forward cargo is past that. Then over to the right hand side, which is obviously the right hand wheel well where the wheel fits. And we turn back this way and show you the aft wall. And it goes back obviously that way to the aft cargo and the tail of the aircraft. Finally, the roof. I'll just turn like this. You can see the hydraulic spaghetti. Pretty much lots and lots and lots and lots of spaghetti going on here. Okay. I'm not even going to try and explain all the plumbing and which goes where and where goes what. But we'll just start in the corner and just see what we can see. So up against the left hand wall, this is the back wall, and that's the the roof in the corner there's the two fire bottles for the engine and you can see this one interconnects to the other one so when you do a, as you fire a bottle between engines you can share this bottle to that one or that one to that one and then from there either to the left engine or to the right engine and when you do that squib test that's the test you're doing on that plug and the wiring there you'll see little green lights and right. Then also staying above here, this is the left hand main wheels up lock mechanism. As you can see by well, that sort of C-shaped clevis that where the wheel looks onto. Here we go down a little bit. There's a pulley system for the, the ailerons. Going down towards a system hydraulic pack with its, its two folders sitting at the bottom and then the two three pair of switches for the indications in the cockpit that system over there is part of the autopilot aileron and aileron system with this bell crank going from there this rod going up and that's the the bar that the or the rod that the the pilot uses the aileron steering. So it's broken up into A system left hand and B system right hand for the hydraulics. And then you have the standby hydraulic tank over there. So that is A system hydraulic tank, B system hydraulic tank, and standby tank for reservoir. So I said this side is all A system. This is A Systems electric hydraulic pump, and on the other side will be B Systems electric hydraulic pump with its own tank and own supply. And maybe you can see it in the distance over there, uh, it's closer there. That's the B Systems hydraulic pack. Above that, just past the tank, is the aileron spoiler mixer. The part that you see when you fly when the ailerons go up, and you see some of the spoilers go up on the wing as well. Uh, that's the thing that is the timing for that. And on the ground, that also helps with the plane with the, with the ground spoilers. Very interesting system. Followed up on that side, we have the up lock mechanism over there for the right hand wheel. And up in the roof, there's a little light. On the flooded versions, they used to have a hole here in the floor inspection hole. And then there was a light bulb that shone that way and the other way. And then on the leg, there was a line. Let me try and show you on this leg over here. There was a little red line, indicator line there. So that the aerostasis could look through the window to make sure that the landing gear is locked. On the 800, it works a bit different. 
it's got uh, obviously the green indicator lights on the forward control panel and they have a standby set on the overhead panel so they've taken away this panel not required anymore since they have a dual indicator system for the landing gear on the back wall you'll see this and the motor over there motor and gearbox that's part of the flat control system and slightly above and on top and beyond that light there's two little things there they are the anti-skid brake controllers so there's so much to sort of show you in there and talk about I don't think I'll have the time enough to do it or explain long enough this is the end of the flap uh, the last sort of bit of the gearbox on the inner flap with the flap track you can see just there in the dark over there the flap track and the spindle with this massive piece of bracketing that runs in that track and is actually attached to the flaps that's with its own flap gearbox going up into a torque shaft that turns to this massive shaft which runs right through this part of the standby flap system quite interesting Here's just the massive A system filter for the hydraulic system. On the other side will be exactly the same for P system in the distance over there. But yeah, a bit of a spaghetti if you can see. Here's another interesting thing up top there. That's called an hydraulic fuse. So what happens if there's pressure from either this side or that side? There's an internal track that runs through that measures the pressure between the two systems or the two sides of the same of the same little valve and if you have hydraulic failure there's a, a little ball shuttle let's say say this side of the pipe is broken off and the pressure is coming from that side it slams that little ball bearing across and closes off the hydraulic fluid from leaking from there so that's called the hydraulic fuse so top there's a few of them fitted in there there's one Here's another two. It even says they're nicely on the picture hydraulic fuse. These are some brake skid control valves again. Lots of plumbing as you can see. The uh, right hand corner, that being the right hand wheel there on the top. flap control it's quite interesting another thing to note if you might be able to see very slightly is the fire wire you'll see a white wire going which I get my finger in there just beyond that there's a wire running it goes into sort of a steel wire going that way, a little clip holding it, and it goes around. This is the fire detection system for this wheel well. Uh, let me see if I've lost it on the picture. There it goes, very, very faint, all the way through to the other side. So these fire wires are there. There's, this runs through the engine, both engines, and the wheel well. It also runs up to the back, through the right, left hand side. Uh, of the car roll all the way back through to the APU compartment as part of the fire warning system which you do that fire test in the cockpit before you start the aircraft or start the APU so this is quite interesting over here is the servicing chart for the shocks gives you dimensions gives you pressures and then you work with temperatures as well to work out what the extension of the shock is supposed to be. Quite interesting stuff to work with. I think it's in this wheel well is you have to do manual fueling. Here's a plumb up system or leveling system with a little ball in the middle to show left to right. On the other side of the wall there's a one for up and down and then you attach a plumb bob on 
little thingy with an indicator to show you what the angle of the aircraft is. So you can do your manual feeding from there to work out what the inches of the grip gauges would be. Yeah, thanks for watching. And we'll do another video later.